Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Metropolis Radio. Today, we are going to be talking about Rockstar Games, and more specifically, we're going to be talking about the fact how they really lost their direction after Bully 2's cancellation. But before we dive any deeper into that, guys, just remember that at least one of my videos every week will not be on the YouTube channel. They will be ex It will be exclusive to BitChute, Odyssey, and Rumble only. So if you are watching this on YouTube and you have not started following me on one of those three websites... The links to my channels on BitChute, Rumble, and Odyssey are in the description below. With that out of the way, guys, let's get right into this article from screen right here, how Rockstar lost its direction after Bully 2's cancellation. Rockstar has experienced a tumultuous few years following Red Dead Redemption 2 release, and many of its problems may be traced back to Bully 2. Bully 2 has been rumored and canceled many times, and since this, tre and since this trend started, Rockstar Games has begun a downward spiral. They still have very successful games such as Grand Theft Auto V and Red Dead Redemption 2, but the company's reputation has taken multiple hits. While its slight in popularity is not yet terminal, Rockstar should be concerned regarding how it could affect its performance in the future. In terms of gameplay, most of Rockstar's big releases have been perfectly fine. However, in most cases, it is Rockstar's actions rather than the games themselves that have been the source of scrutiny from players. People like it when they feel they can trust a developer, and many fans feel that their trust in Rockstar has eroded in recent years. Events such as Take-Two CEO dismissing GTA Trilogy's glitches and a lack of communication over games like Red Dead Online have not put the company in fans' as good graces. There are, many, there are many things that could potentially be blamed for this, and perhaps the cancellation of Bully 2 itself was not the jumping off point. However, it does, it does display symptoms of a lot of the problems that Rockstar has been facing, making it a perfect reference point to discuss the company's recent ills. To retain its status as a prestigious video game developer, Rockstar will need to take a serious look at its direction in the coming years, and how Bully 2's ill-fated development may have affected the company negatively. Now, before we go any further, guys, I just want to point out that I did do a long video detailing the version of Bully 2 that we will never, ever get to play. So if you want a more detailed breakdown of what happened to Bully 2, I recommend going and, and checking out that video. It is on the whatever platform that, that you're watching this on. Um, I believe I titled it, I believe I titled it the version of Bully 2 that you'll, ne that you'll never get to play. Uh, it was so, it was something to that effect. Um, but anyway, getting back into this, um, an article by Blake Hester of Game Informer details what the production of Boy Two, what the what the production of Boy Two, uh, w before its first cancellation was like, and it's a rather tragic story. The crew at Mad Doc Software, renamed Rockstar New England after being acquired by Rockstar, threw themselves into the project enth enthusiastically. The studio wanted to make the next big Rockstar game and was fully committed to making it happen. Developers at Mad Doc wanted to incorporate ideas in Bully 2 that GTA still hasn't attempted, such as relationship values with various NPCs and enabling the player to enter every building in the game. However, increasing workloads and a negative culture change, in change influenced by Rockstar Corporate ostensibly drained a lot of, the, a lot of employees' enjoyment of the job. With developers being pulled to work on other projects, Bully 2 eventually faded away, never released, or even officially announced. Crunch is well crunch is well known as a major problem in the video game industry, and some companies have been open about trying to find ways to cut down on it. Even Rockstar itself admitted in 2020 that it was aware of the problem and would search for a solution. A former Rockstar developer confirmed the seemingly endless crunch that was Red Dead Redemption's development last year. Even when Red Dead Redemption won Game of the Year, they didn't feel satisfied due to how due to how much they disliked the experience of working on it. Of course, the video game industry is a business and work needs to be done, but the personal lives and well-being of workers are also extremely important. It is clear from the Game Inform article that the Rockstar New England employees were less satisfied with their work as more influence came in from corporate, making them feel less secure about their performance and their jobs. This type of issue needs to be resolved quickly because an unhappy and overstressed workforce is not the way for a company to run, especially when focused on entertaining its customers. As mentioned previously, the team at Rockstar New England believed that they had an amazing opportunity with Bully, only for those plans to evaporate, although some elements from Bully 2 made it into Red Dead Redemption 2. Likewise, fans of various Rockstar properties have seen their hopes raised by announcements that ultimately let them down. 
The persistent rumors of Bully 2 are an example of this disappointment, but several official releases have disappointed them all the same. Uh, one such example of Rockstar uh, of Rockstar's fans being upset by an underdelivered response is the launch of Grand Theft Auto: The Trilogy, the definitive edition, the best name for a collection in the history of of gaming. Said no one ever. Many GTA fans were overjoyed at the idea of playing three classic GTA titles on next gen consoles, and those would be GTA 3, GTA Vice City, and GTA San Andreas only for their enthusiasm to be rewarded with buggy ports that ran less efficiently than the near two decade old games they were based on and 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 allegedly um Grove Street Games who made GTA the trilogy the definitive edition used the ports of the mobile games to port it to PS4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch huh i wonder why they were so fucking buggy at launch on home consoles let me sit down and ponder that for a fucking minute. Do, 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 do. All right, I've, I've tangent on for too long. Um, reports of glitches and other problems piled up from displeased fans, and Rockstar and Take-Two suffered a large drop in consumer confidence as players demanded refunds for the buggy GTA Trilogy games. Even with the bugs being fixed over the course of multiple patches, GTA Trilogy's launch remains a rather sore spot for many. Um, it may remain a sore spot for, for, for many people. And I, and I, and I do sympathize with that. If you paid 60 bucks for it and you got basically mobile ports that didn't run worse shit. Um, yeah, that, that, that rather sucks. And it was, it, it was definitely a PR hit to Rockstar, but many, many creators on YouTube and other sites, myself included, boy, oh boy, did we, did we benefit from the, uh, from the buggy launch of GTA, the trilogy, the definitive edition. Anyway, getting back into here, Red Dead Online has been the center of several instances where Rockstar's promises did not deliver what fans were hoping to see. Many of its recent announced events were met with a mix of apathy and frustration as several players bemoaned how little unique content came from them, instead mostly just applying money bonuses and extra quest rewards. Uh, there are plenty of new additions that fans are requesting or hoping for, and many are starting to lose faith in a game that, see, that seems to consistently fail to deliver in a substantial fashion. Now, where Red Dead Online is suffering, this is where this game is thriving. In the eyes of many fans, the vast majority of Rockstar's attention has been focused on Grand Theft Auto Online. Despite GTA Online's own issues with shark cards, it is a long-running and successful game with a very consistent player base. However, as GTA Online continues to be showered with support and frequent updates, the state of Rockstar's other properties is quite stark in comparison. The situation is somewhat reminiscent of how Rockstar New England staff had to take time away from Bully 2 to work on larger titles. Red Dead Online serves as an example for this category as well. There are two widely played online games based on Rockstar's two biggest franchises, Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead. However, GTA Online, GTA Online seems to be heavily favored with the vast amount of content that has been added since release, and the RDO player in the RDO player base is not pleased by this. In fact, the hashtag Save Red Dead Online protest that crashed Rockstar's GTA update post was born from disgruntled Red Dead Online players demanding better content for the game. Outside of GTA Online, Rockstar has generated very few positive headlines recently, with GTA Trilogy releasing in a very poor state and Red Dead Online's player base, be, player base overcome with resentment. The company has had several controversies to deal with. Another rumor of Boy 2's development came and went, and Max Payne is a completely is is completely dormant as a franchise, which is really sad because Max Payne 3 was actually a really really good game. Uh, so its opportunities to earn positive feedback were few. Rockstar did have success with the well-received The Contract update for GTA Online. The update featured a brand new storyline where players learn what happened to GTA 5's Franklin and Lamar after that game's events. Although that content update received positive responses from fans, the rest of the year proved tumultuous. Hey boys and girls, do you remember a time when Rockstar promised single-player DLC for GTA 5? Um, it's been almost nine years since GTA 5 launched. Where's the single player DLC that they promised? 
I love that this article is not is not bringing that up, but they're bringing up uh, the contract update, which is effectively a single player DLC in a multiplayer mode. If from from what they're describing, I haven't played GTA Online probably since mid 2014 because I personally lost interest in it. But still, I remember a time when Rockstar promised the fan base that no, 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 GTA Online is not going to be the sole focus of Grand Theft Auto. We will focus on the single player aspect. Single player DLC is coming for GTA 5. And again, after nine years, no fucking single player DLC came for GTA 5. Uh, Rockstar needs to, needs to do work to repair its damaged reputation in the near future. No fucking shit. The events around the cancellation of Bully 2 are a symptom of a larger problem with the company. With the industry's treatment of workers under scrutiny, it would be wise for Rockstar to reevaluate its practices and repair its name in the eyes of fans. Okay, the, the, the way to repair your name in the eyes of fans is really fucking simple. Go back to being a fucking game developer. At this point, Rockstar is nothing more than ju than just a service company. It's GTA Online, and oh, we'll we'll release a, a Red Dead game uh, here and there, but but GTA Online is where it's at is where it's at, folks. And seriously, there are articles that are basically asking the question: Should Red Dead Online fans just admit defeat and head back to GTA Online? Yeah, you know that multiplayer mode that G that Red Dead Online that you had to pay ten bucks to access. Well, you know, you should just, you know, you should just admit defeat, go back to GTA Online and spend a butt fuck ton of money on shark cards. But I am getting way ahead of myself because I I am I am currently writing a video on, you know, on their announcement of GTA 6, and I have I have a lot that I want to say and I want to write it down before, you know, I start fumbling my own fucking words. So I'm going to go ahead and truly end it right here, guys. If you stuck around this long, thanks so much for doing so. And if you've been following me long enough, you know I'm terrible at ending these videos. So I will just see you guys uh, next time.